This is Debian 13 installed on an AMD 64-bit machine. Good luck following these instructions. Remember to subscribe to this YouTube channel. In this tutorial, we'll look at three ways to put a Linux image on a USB flash drive. We'll then transfer Linux from the USB to the hard drive of an AMD 64-bit computer. Warning number one. To follow this tutorial, I recommend an 8GB or larger USB flash drive. This process will format the USB flash drive and erase its contents. Warning number two. This process will format the AMD64 machine's hard drive and erase all its contents. Warning number three. It is your responsibility to verify the device addresses in your environment. The first step is to open your web browser and download the Debian ISO image. Type Debian Devel install Trixie. Choose Debian installer. Select AMD64 in the first DVD section. Download the image of name Debian hyphen Trixie hyphen DI hyphen RC1 hyphen AMD64 hyphen DVD1.iso. In this video, we'll use three methods to burn the ISO image to a USB flash drive. Method 1 is using the Linux operating system. Method 2 is using the Android operating system. Method 3 is using the Windows operating system. Now begins method 1. Burn the ISO image using the Ubuntu Linux operating system. Search in Applications, Disks. Connect the USB memory. A new device will appear. The name of my device is Zandisk Cruiser U. I will format my USB flash drive. All data on the disk will be lost. The address of my device is slash dev slash sda. Go to the folder where the Debian ISO image is located. Open a terminal in this folder. To burn the image to the USB flash drive, run the following command, sudo dd if equals debian hyphen trixie hyphen di hyphen rc1 hyphen amd64 hyphen dvd1 dot iso of equals slash dev slash sda bs equals 1m status equals progress Now begins method 2, burn the ISO image using the Android operating system. Open the Google Play Store. Right, ISO USB Linux boot. Install the application, etch droid ISO to USB writer. Connect the USB flash drive to the device. Open the application, etch droid iso to USB writer. Press the button, write an image. Choose the image. Debian hyphen. Trixie hyphen di hyphen. RC1 hyphen. AMD64 hyphen. DVD1.iso. Press the button, Grant Access. 
Press the button, OK. Be careful. Writing the image will erase all data on the selected driver. Press the button, Write Image. Lay your device flat on a table and don't touch it. Press the button, Skip. Now begins method 3. Earn a ISO image using the Windows operating system. Open your web browser and type Rufus. Choose the Rufus.ie website. My machine is 32-bit. The version of Rufus compatible with my machine is Windows x86. Connect the USB flash drive to the device. Run Rufus.exe. In the device area, select the exact memory you want to use. This time, the program found my memory automatically. In the boot selection area, Press the Select button. Find and select the image, Trixie-DI-RC1- AMD64- DVD.ISO I chose Write in ISO Image Mode and pressed OK. In Download Required, I press Yes button. Warning, all data on devices will be destroyed. Now connect the bootable USB to the target AMD64 machine. The next step is to configure the BIOS of the AMD64 computer. To configure the boot on my computer I press F12. Choose BIOS Setup. My configuration is as follows. In the Boot Sequence section, select USB Storage Devices. In the USB Configuration section, select Enable Boot Support and Enable External USB Port. Aster Configuration Choose USB Storage Devices. Choose Graphical Install. Select a language. Choose the language to be used for the installation process. The selected language will also be the default language for the installed system. Press the Continue button. Select your location. The selected location will be used to set your time zone and also for example to help select the system locale. Normally this should be the country where you live. This is a short list of locations based on the language you selected. Choose other if your location is not listed. Selected country, territory, or area and press the continue button. Configure the keyboard. Selected key map to use and press the continue button. Configure the network. Your system has multiple network interfaces. Choose the one to use as the primary network interface during the installation. If possible, the first connected network interface found has been selected. I chose Interface Wireless and pressed the Continue button. Configure the network. 
Select the wireless network to use during the installation process. Choose your Wi-Fi name and press the Continue button. Configure the network. Choose WEP slash open if the network is open or secured with WEP. Choose WPA slash WPA2 if the network is protected with WPA slash WPA2. Press the Continue button. Enter the passphrase for WPA slash WPA2 PSK authentication. This should be the passphrase defined for the wireless network you are trying to use. Enter your Wi-Fi password and press the Continue button. Please enter the host name for this system. The host name is a single word that identifies your system to the network. If you don't know what your host name should be, consult your network administrator. If you are setting up your own home network, you can make something up here. Press the Continue button. I left the domain name empty and pressed the Continue button. Set up users and passwords. Some account needs to be available with administrative super user privileges. The password for that account should be something that cannot be guessed. To allow direct password-based access via the root account, you can set the password for that account here. Alternatively, you can lock the root account's password by leaving this setting empty and instead use the system's initial user account which will be set up in the next step to gain administrative privileges. This will be enabled for you by adding that initial user to the pseudo group. Enter the same password twice and press the continue button. A user account will be created for you to use instead of the root account for non-administrative activities. Please enter the real name of this user. This information will be used for instance as default origin for emails sent by this user as well as any program which displays or uses the user's real name. You full name is a reasonable choice. Press the continue button. Select a username for the new account. Your first name is a reasonable choice. The username should start with a lowercase letter, which can be followed by any combination of numbers and more lowercase letters. Press the Continue button. Make sure to select a strong password that cannot be guessed. Enter the same password twice and press the Continue button. The installer can guide you through partitioning a disk using different standard schemes or, if you prefer, you can do it manually. With guided partitioning, you will still have a chance later to review and customize the results. If you choose guided partitioning for an entire disk, you will next be asked which disk should be used. I will use the guided method and press the continue button. Warning! All data on the disk you select will be erased. If this disk has Windows installed, Windows will be deleted. If this disk has Linux installed, Linux will be deleted. I choose my ATA hard drive and press the continue button. I choose the all files in one partition schemes and press the continue button. If you agree with the configuration, select finish. Press the continue button. Warding. This will destroy all data on any partitions. Select Yes and press the Continue button. In Configure the Package Manager, select No and press the Continue button. In Configuring Popularity Contest, choose what you like and press the Continue button. Choose what you like and press the Continue button. I installed the Grub Bootloader group on my audit disk. Press the Continue button. To finish the installation, press the Continue button. Now disconnect the bootable USB from the AMD64 machine. After the reboot, wait for the login screen. Enter the password created for the new user. This is the second password created during this installation process.
Now we're going to add the repositories. Open the terminal emulator and run the following commands. Command number one. Huh. Enter the super user password created during installation. Command number two. Now no. Slash etc. Slash apt. Slash sources. Dot list. Enter the number sign in front of this line to disable it. Press Ctrl O, Enter to save the change. Press Ctrl X to exit Nano. Command number three. APT modernize hyphen sources. Command number four. CP slash USR slash share slash doc slash apt slash examples slash debian dot sources slash etc slash apt slash sources dot list dot d slash command number five a pt update we're done This is Debian 13 installed on an AMD 64-bit machine. Good luck following these instructions. Remember to subscribe to this YouTube channel.